I want to read a verse of Scripture this morning. Um, I was in my uh, daily reading the other day. This verse jumped out and grabbed a hold of me, and I love it when that happens uh, once in a while. And uh, I, I jotted down these thoughts, and the Lord gave me this message for you this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and uh, I want you to look at the last verse of that chapter, verse number 15. Everybody looking at it, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 15. Here the Bible says, Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. We're all talking about gifts this time of year. When I read it the other day, I thought I need to preach that this morning. I'm going to preach this morning on the unspeakable gift. The Bible said there, Thanks be. God, thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. In the Bible, it says that God, the gift God gives us is unspeakable. That word unspeakable grabbed a hold of me. So we're going to talk about gifts this morning, since everybody's talking about this time of year. Now, unspeakable, when it says it here, is not like it's not like somebody saying, shh, you can't talk about it. He wasn't saying unspeakable like, no, be quiet, don't talk about it. That wasn't what he meant. What he meant was there's no words in our language or vocabulary to describe God's gift. It's unspeakable. You can't describe it. And uh, the Bible said in 1 Peter 1, 8, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now we see him not, Yet believing, we rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. One of the things, it's, it's, it's hard sometimes, a pastor, preacher's job and our task is to um, talk, uh, is, is, is to describe the indescribable. How can you describe somebody who's indescribable? My job this morning is to explain the unexplainable. How can a man explain the unexplainable? How can I tell the untellable? How can I show you the unshowable? How can I uh, uh, relate to you the unrelatable? The only way to do that is the Holy Ghost take what I say and reveal it to you in your heart. The Bible said he's unspeakable. This gift that I'm going to talk about this morning is unspeakable. There's, you can't speak it. You can't, it's unsearchable are his riches and his ways past finding out. Uh, it's, it reminds me of the guy who uh, had been, been lived all his life in sin. He got saved, and he was an old country boy. He'd been out in the country all his life, and he'd just gotten in church. only been in church a few days, and the preacher was baptizing him. And he took him down in to baptize um, him, and, he, and he's going to put him in that water. We have here the baptism of fire. Uh, but uh, he's going to put him in, in water, and he put him down like that. And that old country boy, you know, he hadn't been in church long enough to know our religious terms. He didn't know, oh, hallelujah to the great omnipotent Jehovah God. He didn't know none of that stuff. And he's, that old boy come up out of that water, and a smile come on his face, and he didn't know, he just didn't know what to do with himself. He, did, he, was, just, uh, he was just like that, and he just slapped his hand and said, hot! Diggity dog, like that, right up out of the back. Now you know what? That that what he was feeling inside him was unspeakable. Have you ever felt that? I have. Boy, I'll never forget when it bubbled up in my soul when I first got saved, and I thought there ain't no words to describe this. You tell them it's great, that don't seem good enough. It's wonderful, it's more than wonderful. You say, well, it's it's, it's fantastic, man. Uh, you know, and there's no words to describe it. The Bible says that the gift of God is unspeakable. Now, I'm going to attempt a feeble man like me to describe that this morning. Why is the gift of God called unspeakable? I, here's the thoughts the Lord gave me. Number one, I believe it's unspeakable because of the one who give it. Because of the one who give it. You know who that was? God himself. Sometimes the most coveted and cherished gifts we have are that because of the person that gave them to us, right? I mean, I've, I've been in people's house and they'll say, uh, see there, I have a baseball and that baseball was uh, uh, autographed 
by some professional baseball player. And, I mean, it's just any ordinary ball being like that wouldn't be worth $5. But they say that ball is special because of the one that gave it. The one that gave that and autographed it made that baseball or a football or, or whatever, whatever you might have from a, maybe a shirt or something signed by a famous athlete. Sometimes it's special because of the one who gave it. Uh, for example, uh, we have some gifts in our country this morning. The, the Statue of Liberty is an icon of, a, of the image of freedom and independence, supposedly. It was given to the United States by the French in 1886 as, and they call her Lady Liberty or the Enlightening of the World. And many people, when they see the Statue of Liberty, say that thing is special because of how it got here and where it come from. And a gift is special this morning because of the person who gives that gift. Amen. I'm telling you, what, there's a desk in the Oval Office in the White House. That desk was put together in 18, uh, let's say 1880, and it was built uh, for and sent here by, by Queen Victoria. Wow. Uh, and that thing was made out of timber from the British exploration ship, the Resolute. That thing was made out of timber from a British uh, ship, and they put it in the Oval Office in the, in the White House, or it actually wouldn't put it in there until the 60s, but President Hayes received that as a gift in 1880 from Queen Elizabeth herself. They still use it in the office today. It's in that Oval Office, as far as I know, right now. And Kennedy was the one that first had it put in the Oval Office. And that thing still sits there today. Now, the, now, the, now they can afford to buy a, a desk however they want. You know why they leave that one in there? It's because of who give it. It was a gift to the president from Queen Victoria herself. You know what makes that desk special? The person or the one who gave it. We all have gifts like that. I at home, I at home, I've got a, I've got a shotgun, and uh, that shotgun is, uh, is about that long, sawed-off shotgun. My daddy come home that thing one time, and my daddy gave that to me, and it's, it's just that much over being legal. I mean, it's, it's just barely legal. I think they have to be 18 inches or something like that, whatever it is. And it's just barely over that. And that thing is a 12-gauge shotgun. And it had a little handle like this right here. And Daddy said, here, keep this. You, you'll need this one. <laughs> and I kept that thing. It had a Harley Davidson. Uh, some Harley rider had it because it had a Harley Davidson sticker on the, on the end of the wood. And it said, ride to live and live to ride. And it had a little holster. You can you can actually put it on your on your side and a holster like that. Man, come walking in with a gun down to here, and and you can shoot it one handed if if you can. But I, I every time I it goes like that when I shoot it. Uh, but you know what? I, I ain't shot that thing in years, but I wouldn't take nothing with that thing. You know why? Because it where it come from. I, that's a piece of my daddy that he left me. I wouldn't. It ain't for sale. I don't. I'm telling you, I. Well, we'll talk about it. Uh, if you, you want it bad enough, but you know what I mean. It's very, very special. It's special because of where it come from. I got it home this morning. Big old frying pan. Big old black cast iron frying pan. That was my mom's. And my mom cooked in that thing for 40 years. And it's just as good today as it was today. You know, you can't wear them things out. Uh, the more, these, these dumb girls now go buy these little Teflon things or whatever. You, uh, you ever get you one of them old iron frying frying pan, they stay hot longer, the best cornbread in the world comes out of them, and the best way to fry uh, bacon and, and sausage or fix gravy is one big old black iron, and the, and the, the blacker, and, and you, don't, you don't wash them, you can't put soap on them, mom said, don't put this in water, Danny, I said, well, how do you clean it, she said, you just wipe it off, and put grease on it, stick it in the oven about 400 degrees, leave it in there for about an hour, and it's clean. I killed, and then you and you actually store it with it a little bit greasy. And you know what? I wouldn't take nothing in the world for that old frying pan. I hardly ever get it out a couple of times a year, and we'll fix gravy and biscuits or something. But I'm telling you, that gift is special because of where it come from. My mom in heaven uh, gave me that frying pan, and it's it's priceless. You know what I mean? Sometimes a gift is is, is unspeakable because of the person who gave it. Now, when you think about that. Think about this. We're talking about God here, people. Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. That gift's unspeakable. Hey, you're, a, a baseball player gave me this. A basketball player. Guess who gave us this? 
God, the creator of the universe. I'm talking about the one that's the key of knowledge. I'm talking about the one that's the wellspring of wisdom. I'm talking about the one who's the roadway of righteousness. We're talking about the highway of holiness, the gateway of glory. He's the master of the mighty. He's the captain, brother, of the, of the conquerors. He's the head of the heroes. He's the leader of the legislators. I mean, he's the overcomer of the overcomers. He's the overseer of all the overseers. His office is manifold. His promise is sure. His life is, is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is, is everlasting. His love never changes. That's who I'm talking about this morning. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. I can't describe Him. He's indescribable. Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift this morning of salvation. You can't get Him out of your mind. You can't wash Him off your hands. You can't outlive Him and you can't live without Him. The Pharisees couldn't stand Him, but they couldn't stop Him. Pilate couldn't find Him. Any fault in Him. The witnesses' testimonies could not agree. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him. And the grave couldn't hold him. I'm talking about somebody that conquered death, hell, the grave, got up shaking the keys, said, I own it all. I had a cattle on a thousand hills. I'm, I'm satisfied this morning with my gift because of who it came from. God gave his son, people. There's never been a day like it. And we celebrate his birth by giving gifts. You know what we've done? we placed that date on our coins. Every bit of money in that jar right there this morning got his birthday on it. What about that? Our birth certificates, our death certificates, all our records bear that date. It's written upon parchments and engraved upon the faces of giant buildings all over this country. It's on every newspaper. It's on every check. It's on every deed. It's on every register of deeds at the courthouse. Every check you sign, every, transfer, uh, uh, every form you fill out has got the date of his birth, 2016. You know where that come from? His birth, that gift, your driver's license, every human transaction. You go to Walmart and buy stuff. You're going to look at certain such a time, such that, 2016. His date, the date God gave this gift to the world. Amen? Your, everything you've got, it cannot be avoided. It cannot be evaded. I mean, brother, it's more widely advertised on earth than anything that's ever happened. He gave his son and revealed his son to defeat the devil. This gift is special this morning because of the one who gave it. Number two, let me say this this morning. The gift is unspeakable because of the price paid for it. Because of the price paid for it. Think about the price that was paid. So you and I, you know what the Bible said? First Peter 1 Peter 1.18, uh, it, said, it said, You're not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. I'm telling you, there's your price paid. Now, I looked it up, and I began to study a little bit, and I studied about big, famous, expensive gifts. One fellow brought his wife a $175,000 Rolls Royce. Uh, some, that's a pretty nice gift. Uh, there, the, there's a bronze sculpture of a, of a Roman Abramovich called the Walking Man. He paid over $10 million for that statue uh, for his wife or girlfriend. The Star of the East by Edward McLean, was a wedding gift with a 94.8 carat diamond in it on a chain with 34 carat emerald, 32 grams of pearl, net value $11.9 million. There's an expensive gift. That's a lot to pay for a gift. Elizabeth Taylor got a 69 carat diamond uh, on her 44th birthday, something like that, uh, worth millions and millions and millions of dollars today. No telling what that thing will be worth. They've come out with a dog collar. Get that? Dog collar by, called the Daily Mail. Armor, armor, dog collar. It's a 52-carat diamond with 1,600 little diamonds around it. Uh, $3.2 million for a dog collar. We're talking about people now, as the old saying goes, 
got more money than they got sense. Uh, we're talking about people who uh, don't uh, have it and don't know how to use it. Uh, uh, think of the missionaries could use that. Lordy mercy. I'm telling you, I, I read about a solid gold pair of high heels. Solid gold uh, covered high heels with diamond studs worth millions of dollars. A $38,000 pool table that somebody bought. Look at that. But now listen to this. The Bible said, he said, oh, he spent millions of dollars, silver and gold. Listen what the Bible says. We were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. There's your price, hallelujah. Glory to God, people. Woo! That'll make an old country boy holler amen. Thank God. There's a price paid for me. Listen, our salvation's free, but it was not cheap. The price that God gave his son, the son gave his life. It's incorruptible, not with corruptible things as silver and gold. All the money in this world couldn't pay for one little bus kid's soul. All the silver and all the gold in this world couldn't buy one person's soul from hell. But Jesus went to that cross, stuck his hands out, put down his feet, Nail through his hands. Nail through his feet. That's the greatest Christmas story gift ever heard, ever been told. Hallelujah. It's precious and unspeakable because of the price paid. You hear them people buying them expensive gifts? They ain't none of them shedding their blood for them. Shell out some money here and there. Not their blood. He gave his blood. He gave his blood. Number three, this morning, quickly. I seen this the other day when I was studying I said, number one, it's unspeakable because the one that give it. It's unspeakable because the price that was paid. Finally, number, third this, number three this morning, it's unspeakable because of the results of receiving it. The Bible said the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Listen, if you bought me a, a gift this morning and said, here, Brother Danny, here it is, and I unwrap it, it's a songbook, and I say, oh, I, I really love this. I, I cherish this. It's a book. I'm going to leave it when I die. I'll give it to somebody. It'll wear out. Something will go wrong with it. But this, have you ever thought about what happened when you received God's gift? You wondered why Paul said, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Lord, it's frustrating sometimes trying to preach because I feel it in here. It's hard to put in words what you feel in here. All you preachers know what I'm talking about. You say, boy, if I could just tell people what's inside me, if I could just put it in words, it's unspeakable. Paul said it's unspeakable. He said, thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift because of the results of receiving it. Well, what are the results? I'll tell you what they are. When you receive this gift, all your sins are gone off of your record. I'm telling you, that's a benefit and a hack. Everything you've ever done wrong, every lie you've ever told, every dirty thought you've ever think, every step you've ever took wrong, every time you've ever told a lie, every time, listen, when you receive God's gift, His, His life is put on your record. When He sees you, He sees the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. I heard somebody the other day talking about all religion. These people are crazy. These religious nuts. You've got to keep the commandments so you'll die and go to hell. That ain't right. That ain't right. Ain't nobody never kept the commandments but Jesus Christ. It ain't boring being a Christian. We're not in bondage. Glory to God. We receive the free gift of eternal life had our sins washed away. There's not one sin on my record this morning because of the gift of God which is eternal life. Whoa, hallelujah. Thank God I got the gift. Hallelujah. I'm about to shout. I'm about to shout. I'm telling you, I'm glad I got it. I'm glad I've got it. I'm glad I know what Jesus is. I'm glad I've got the gift of eternal life today. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you this morning, it's unspeakable because of the results of receiving it. I've never got a... Now, I ain't never been to court. I've been... To court, but I've never been in court. You know, you know what I mean? I ain't never been charged with a crime or a speeding ticket. And uh, even a ticket like that, you stand there and you're real nervous and you're scared. 
I can't imagine standing in front of the judge saying, but boy, the second he says, bam, case dismissed, you're a free man. You ever walked out that door and thought, woo, amen, free at last, free at last. I'm out from under this speeding ticket. I'm out from under this trouble. I ain't, you ain't on probation. You're, you're out of jail. You ever felt that feeling of being set free? Well, that's what it's like being saved. Being saved is saying, free, I'm free at last. Free from the bondage of sin. Free from the guilt of, of, my, of the sorrow of my past. Thank God I'm free. Praise the Lord. Free at last. When you receive it, you're like a man standing in front of a judge that says, case dismissed. When you receive it, your name is written in God's book in heaven. When you receive this gift, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift of God. Like if I gave this gift to him, see? All he got to do is receive it. Receive that, Jimmy. You got to give it back though. I, I'm, I'm, I'm an Indian giver. The Lord ain't. All right. He received that gift. That's all you got to do to get saved. You receive the gift of God. You don't earn it. You don't work for it. You don't pay for it. God sticks it down like that and it's got a big old package and it's got your name on it, whosoever will. And as soon as you take it, your name is recorded in the book of life. That's one of the benefits. That's why it's unspeakable. Your name is in God's book. God's book. God's book. I remember hearing a preacher say years ago, he, uh, he, uh, they used to have a little community Christmas tree and, and all people was real poor. And this was back in the early 20, 20s and 30s after, and after the Depression in the early 30s. And he said he'd stand there as a little old boy and they'd gather around and the people in the town would come and they had a big Christmas tree and they'd hand out presents to everybody. And he said he remembers standing there as a little boy and they'd call out this person, that person, this person, that person. And he said finally the last gift would be out. And he was standing there saying, I wish they'd call my name. I wish they'd call my name and turn around and walk back home with nothing. And I thought how awful it would be to stand before God one day on the judgment and the Lord say, the book of life is open. And you're saying, I said, please call my name. Please call my name. And your name's not in that book. I'm glad to say this morning, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad my name is in the book. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. You say, how do you know that, Brother Danny? Because I've received the gift of God. That's eternal life. And you can too. You can know it if you quit trusting your, your life and just say, I take the gift, Lord. I take like Colonel Sanders did. He's 79 years old. Tried religious, tried giving, tried, couldn't find no peace. And he finally got saved. And he said, I've received the gift and I love the giver. And he got saved and went to heaven when he died. He didn't go to heaven for making chicken. That might have helped him a little bit. But he got saved by the grace of God like everybody else did. Never forget this story. The story of a preacher named Curtis Bradford. He's a pastor in South Carolina. Years ago, and he said when he was growing up, when he was seven years old, he said it was Christmas Eve. All the packages were wrapped underneath the tree. He said he went to bed that night as a seven-year-old boy so excited he couldn't sleep. I remember doing that, don't you? Growing up, you know. And two o'clock in the morning, he jumped out of bed on Christmas Day, run down the steps, and started digging into his presents because they told him you had to wait till Christmas morning. And he said he started tearing out his gifts. There was a little cowboy outfit that he had wanted a couple of little play six-shooter pistols, a set of drums, and he started tearing into his stocking, getting the candy out, apple, oranges, eating them. And he, he, uh, he was enjoying it. And he said all of a sudden he looked up and there was his daddy on the steps looking at him like that. He thought, oh no, daddy done come down the steps and found me opening my ear. And he said, about that time, a smile come on his daddy's face. 
He said, Whew, I'm all right. And he said, his daddy sat down in a big recliner, and he, like we used to do, I used to get up at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning on Christmas Day, Daddy, look what I got. Daddy, look what I got. He already knew, you know, it was that. But he said he laughed, and he said he showed him his guns. He showed him his... his uh, uh, drums. He showed him his cowboy outfit. He said, look, Dad. He sat there and he played with his toys, played with his toys, and finally fell asleep. And his daddy picked him up, said he went and put him, put him, carried him, and he remembered him laying him down in his bed that night. He said he'd never forget that Christmas. Years and years and years and years went by. He became a man of his 40s, 50s. One Christmas, all the family was gathered together. Daddy was an old man at this time, laying in the other room. His body was paralyzed from a car accident and cancer. And treatments and medicine and stuff they'd give him had brought him down to less than 100 pounds. He laid in that bed. And they walked in there and he said, Daddy, can you enjoy Christmas with us? He said, I believe I can. His son went in there Got his daddy ready? He said, I want to shave. He had to help him shave. He took that razor and began to shave his daddy's face as he laid there in that bed, less than 100 pounds. Used to be a big, strong man. He laid there in that bed. And his dad, you know, his daddy said, now, now rub it this way, son. You know how men, they shave a certain way because their hair grows. You've got to do it the other way. Zigzag and everything else uh, to get the hairs off your face. And uh, he, he, he got him shaved, got him in there, set him down. Now, Daddy watched him enjoy Christmas. And he said in about 15 minutes, he said the pain got so bad that he couldn't stand it. And he said, you're going to have to put me back in the bed. And that boy, he said, I'll never forget, that preacher grabbed my little bony daddy who's about dying with cancer and picked him up in my arms and carried him back out of that room and put him in. And he said, when I was doing that, all I could think about was when I was seven years old, he had picked me up and carried me and put me in my bed. And now the whole thing was turned around that I had to pick my little daddy up and put him in the bed. And he said, I got down beside his bed and daddy pulled at the tape player and said, punch that button, son, where he'd listen to Scripture. And he punched that button, and it was John 14, where he said, God said, in my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. And he said, me and Daddy both bowed our head and thanked God for our salvation. He said, two days after Christmas, his daddy checked out and died and went home to be with the Lord. And he said it was just so happy. He was so happy. He said what? He said my daddy had hope and I had hope because Jesus, the gift of God, whose birth we celebrate this time of year, died to save me and daddy. And I'll see my daddy again. Thank God because of that gift. That's what happens when you receive that gift. My daddy loved Christmas. It's his favorite time of year. He died just a few days after Christmas. Last time I saw him, he's out in my yard. I hollered at him. It was raining, cold. And he's turning around with some of my wood, going around the house, stealing my wood. And I hollered at him. And that's the last time I ever got to speak to my daddy. But you know what? Because of this gift. I'm talking to you about this morning. I've got the hope. That's the result of receiving this gift. I'll see him again one day. I'll see him again one day. Now, if you don't, you're in trouble. But when you receive it, you know what the, you know what the benefits of receiving this gift? When you get it, you're hell proof and heaven bound. Hell proof. You're not going to burn in hell. That's why it's unspeakable. Would somebody speak that? Is there anybody in here can that describe how great it is knowing you're not going to hell when you die? Listen, if you stay down here 60, 70, 80 years, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. This is just a little breath compared to forever and ever. Live for then. 
Live for then. Don't live for now. Live for then. I'll tell you a story and I'm done. Years ago, there was a man. This man's name was Lindsay. He had a rough life growing up. His daddy was a mean, severe, rough man. And for some reason, he gave him extra chores and put hard work on him during Christmas. He said, I grew up hating Christmas. He said the verbal abuse was as bad as the physical abuse. And the physical abuse was bad. He hit him, sometimes bringing blood. And he said, my daddy talked to me like I was a dog. Name calling, insults, degrading me, talking to me awful. And he said, all of my life I was tormented with those demons at Christmas. Man grew up with a hard heart. He grew up hating his daddy and hating Christmas. And he always said, if I ever kill myself, it's going to be at Christmas time, the hated time of year. And grew up getting drunk, going from woman to woman, from place to place, trying to find peace, and had no peace. And one year is almost Christmas. And he got the TV on and watched Bing Crosby's White Christmas one last time. And when the movie was over, 51 years old, took a pistol and put it to his head and ended his life. He said, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to watch Bing Crosby's White Christmas one more time. And he blew his brains out and had his funeral. His last name was Crosby. It was Bing Crosby's son, Lindsey Crosby. And you know what that is? That's a picture of a man and a family that don't have the gift that's unspeakable. If you don't have him this morning, you ain't got nothing to live for. If you don't have the Lord in your life this morning, you don't have nothing to look forward to. You'll never know what Christmas is supposed to mean until you receive this unspeakable gift. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed. Every eyes closed.